All right, everybody. I have made it to my second episode of Jorge's Isolation Podcast. This week, this episode, I am joined by the one and the only Joshua Kennedy. He is a writer, actor, director, producer, master of everything. Director of the Vesuvius Project, The Return of Sherlock Holmes, The Menace with Five Arms, and Night of Medusa, and many, many, many more. It's been 10 years. But before we jump into this, Joshua, I have to say that I've been getting some hateful DMs about some comments I made uh, aimed toward one uh, Matt LeBlanc. And uh, the, the, these DMs uh, are hurtful, mainly coming from my wife, who is a huge fan of the show Friends. And I stand by my words. So uh, he's not funny, plain and simple. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Joshua. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Thank Glad you. that we're all surviving in this crazy, crazy times. That oh, we're you in. bet, man. It's crazy. Like, who would have thought? That we would have left New York and that uh, the crazy would have followed us. What did you think? <laughs> yeah. We, we think? left to get away from the crazy. But uh, I, I've been telling everyone, if, you, if we went back in time and talked to us in November of last year, and it's like, guess what's going to happen in 2020? I don't think we would have believed ourselves. It would have I been mean, the next gooey film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything it's, that's happening right now would have been one of your movies. It, totally, completely. I completely, yeah. It's, it's wacky, wacky times. Oh, I know. So when was the last time we saw each other? I think it was, what, Sherlock? Or did we have dinner or lunch or something before then? I think we, we then? saw before, because around Sherlock, that was about the time I graduated. So yeah. 2016, four years? You're getting Is old, kid. Right? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Get ready for AARP. <laughs> yeah, it's, the it's retirement been benefits are coming it's, it's, in soon. It's been more than a year, I think. Oh, definitely uh, more than a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what have you been up to since then? You've been working Just, on some fun stuff. I've seen that. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see what happened after New York came back um, yes. and just started. I mean, I'm always, you know me, I'm always making movies, projects and doing productions and all these crazy things. A yep. uh, big one was uh, House of the Gorgon, which uh. was... La two years ago and then bl bled into last year and it was i had brought um four hammer film stars back to be martine in it. beswick yes yes martine caroline monroe veronica carlson veronica who hasn't been in a movie in 30 years and uh christopher neem and you know brought them all back and we made our own hammer film which was house of the gorgon which i still don't believe happened it seems like a dream how did you get that to happen, man? Like, seriously, like, I, I know you're a huge fan. I know you met Martine a few times before at mm. uh, some um, festivals or like uh, um, different uh, circuits, conventions. conventions. Yeah. yeah. So, so how did that happen or what? Well, over, over, I mean, we, I met her just as a fan at the Monster Bash convention, yeah. which is the, com the Comic Con of old monster movies. Yeah. And I, uh, you probably know this. Um, went up to her and just asked her to be in this music video that I was going to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, during, during her lunch break, all she had to do was sit there and I would dance around her and sing to her. And she amazingly said, yes, she could have said no, fought me off as some crazy, you know, fanboy. And she said, yes. And we had an instant friendship that grew over the years. And every time she, she lives in London, every time she came back to the States for some convention, I went up to see her in New Jersey, Philadelphia, and we would always keep shooting things. And then she's good friends with Caroline Monroe, who's another hammer actress, girl. hammer yeah. girl, bond girl and Harryhausen girl. And she was like, well, I want to be in the next video. And so we became bigger and bigger as the years went on. And finally it was Caroline who said, we should all just make a movie at some point. And I think she said it as a joke. Yeah. But as soon as she said that I was, I'm writing it. I, I <laughs> yeah. and instantly started writing it, and they were all on board. It was a wonderful, one of the coolest experiences of my life. That's how, uh, that's what one thing that I love about you, and I think that I, I think when when we were talking about this before coming in was I had I, I texted you. And I said, you know what, you're the future of the industry, and what's going to happen. And you did that little face, like Haha, no, I'm not, and, and you are, you are. And for those of you that don't know Josh Kennedy or his work. This guy has been making movies since what you're five, five, yes, five. Yeah. And you 
make magic out of nothing. And you have made magic with something, but it doesn't matter as long as you have the idea and you just want to go shoot it, you shoot it. Nothing stops you. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's one oh, thing thank I you. always, always, always admired about you was that you get the idea. It could be Attack of the Fried Chicken. Didn't you have that? <laughs> yes. And you had well, that, the Octopus that, people? Yeah. yeah, or mm-hmm. the Fried Chicken mm-hmm. from Mars or something like that, right? Yeah, Fried Chicken from Outer Space. That's, from outer that space. was never yeah. finished. We, we started it and then it kind of... But it's going to be finished with a huge yeah. budget. J.K. Abrams <laughs> is going to produce that. And we're going to make Marvel. it happen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's actually, it was, so this is what people don't know is that Marvel was toying around with phase, with, with, with the first phase and how they're going to end it. And, you know, is mm-hmm. it like, are we going to use Thanos? And then you propose the fried chicken. And then <laughs> it, was a, it was a long, long battle. That's why they had to make all those other movies in between. Yes. Iron yeah. Man and Infinity War. But I guess Thanos won, won out just because of politics. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Uh, but, like, I'm sure you've told this story a million times because I've heard you on other podcasts. And I know you, you get interviewed all the time. How did you get started into it? And I know the story. Your mom put you down in front of the TV and <laughs> yes. said, watch Star Wars, was it? Yeah. Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. And Star Wars. And she said, this is our religion. And uh, uh, it, it is all the in- way. <laughs> Do you remember the, the, I mean, it's it's so crazy. I was, I mean, a little off topic. I was giving a talk to high school students. before. This was before the whole COVID thing. I mean, this was early, probably yeah. January. And I was trying to tell them that story. And I was like, remember when we, you had the VHS tapes? And no, one, everyone was looking at me with blank stares. Was, I, I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, are we that old that this generation doesn't know what a VCR is? This is yeah. crazy. Anyway. Yeah. That, well, I, I was watching a TikTok. And yes, I was, I was on TikTok. And this dad... He's like, check this out. This is how the generations have changed. And so he says, uh, here's example one, case one. He goes, honey. And he goes to his wife. He's like, talk on the phone. Like, mime like you're talking on the phone. And she does this where she has the finger, like, you know, like the pinky uh, to the yeah. mouth and the thumb toward the ear. And he's like, exactly. And then he goes to his kids that are like maybe 10, 11, 12 oldest. And he's like, Mime like you're talking on the phone, and they do this little flat hand on their ear. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Wow. Has it changed that much that these kids that yeah. are 12 years old don't know that the phones were like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They yeah. were shaped like fingers doing the cowabunga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how no, all that's, of our that's phones crazy. Were. Yeah. But yeah, just just to see a sea of a, a classroom of, of blank faces. Of like, remember the, the videotapes, and, and no one knew what it was. Yeah, dude. Anyway, uh, where I was going with this was was it was on it was the the special edition three VHS tapes of Star Wars that were basically run to the ground as a kid me just rewatching and rewatching but and so at age five I made my first movie which was, was it that? came from, it came from the bathroom uh, it was as it always yeah. does <laughs> yes <laughs> it uh, was this giant monster that came out of the toilet and attacked all of my little toy soldiers that's um, so cool. Yeah, you know, was... that, 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 the other thing, too, now that I'm a father of a little girl, I also not only just admire you, but the fact that your parents encouraged your, your creative endeavors. Yes. All along the way. You remember you had the summer circuses. You had all the movies. Your mm-hmm. dad's in a lot of your movies. Your sister's in all yes. your movies. Your mom always is involved with everything, whether she's in the mm-hmm. movie or just helping out some way. That's one of the most beautiful thing. And now I think that's bled over into to my relationship with my daughter. Like she's in my shorts that I've uh, not my, my actual shorts like that I'm wearing, but like <laughs> some shorts that, uh, that we, I, I've written. And, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, but she has been putting on our clothes lately, but it has nothing to do <laughs> with art. Maybe it does. I don't know. But she she actually has her starring debut in uh, a series uh-huh. of shorts that I've written and we've shot for uh, the first two episodes. They're they're finishing being edited, but um, I, I I really admired that your parents really did not yes. like, you know, shrug it off. You know, a lot of times that that mm-hmm. could happen with a lot of kids. I, and I know I will shrug that off. Yeah, we we. I mean, I'm sure you know friends who who had parents that that were a little too too. Res- yeah, or weren't it's like you're gonna go man. work in the mine. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, <laughs> puppy. yeah oh, go. Yes. You're gonna oh. like it. 
You're going to work yeah. in the mine like your grandfather. You know, there's no mines around here. They're going to find them. <laughs> His grandfather before him, you're going to earn it. Earn yeah. that money. Yeah. We, we earned our living through our hands, not through our pretty faces. <laughs> These hands. You got city hands, Mr. Hooper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a merman. <laughs> I'm a merman. So then so, from there... So, your your uh your daughter she she loves the the camera she loves the limelight or what, what? no she hates no? being do ever since she was in the womb man we could never get a good sonogram picture of her either <laughs> every so time like she would you, you could see her but the moment mm -hmm. like we're gonna take that picture you know that one that we're gonna surprise everybody with yes. she rolled over every single time and then there's wow. a point like i think at about 16 weeks um, you do an anatomy test uh, mm -hmm. in the womb where they check, you know, the, the, see if there's 10 digits, um, yeah, yeah. if there's, you know, any fluid in the spine or checking for downs or any kind of mm -hmm. diseases or anything like that. And uh, man, she made that so hard because she kept like turning around. Yeah. And wow. so getting her to um, to be photogenic uh, or like be present for the camera is uh is mainly her dad's business. Like yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's his forte. Mm -hmm. She was so interested though with lighting and really? the camera stuff. Yeah, dude, it was so so uh, amazing seeing her like walk around and check the lights. And going, cool, like, yeah. like yeah, like she would see the back of it and then see it over here and the diffusers and stuff and wow. you know the camera. Wow. Yeah, so maybe she'll be a director and then you know we'll get uh, uh, some cool little stories and she'll probably have like Honey Girl <laughs> instead yeah, yeah, of Honey Boy. <laughs> And I'm the, the, the <laughs> asshole dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's that's, like, that's cool, that's, yeah, no, it, it's yeah. cool. But I, I, I really like, I think about that and I think about like your family and how supportive they are of you, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in anything. I mean, this is, I could have been, uh, uh, you know, a serial killer and they've been like, oh, yay, oh, great. Yay. Good job. You know, you need yeah. your knife sharpened, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to help me help the, the I'll help hide the body. That, that, yeah. That, yeah they're, I was they're, at Home Depot buying some mulch and I thought, <laughs> you know what you need? You need a new shovel, a hacksaw, <laughs> and some rope. And I what? bought it right for you. Why, why they're southern and elderly with that voice, I don't know, but uh, that's how that's it what is. You your dad's from Boston. He's like, I got you some some wicked smart rope. <laughs> in my car. In your car. So we can yeah. dump the body in the car down Harvard Yard. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I had to learn that in grad school. <laughs> 50 grand. Well spent. Hell yeah. Mm. So then you get older. You continue mm. with the movies. What's going on? Like what, what – um, what have you started shooting when you're in junior high, high school? Because I know you really started cooking with gas in high school, right? Yes, high, high school, it really all started coming together. One, because, I mean, you, uh, did you, you didn't do drama in high school, did you? No, man. No, it was no. later on, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, you, yeah. you know what I'm talking about, that, that group of uh, drama team, if it's in college and in high school. For me, it was in high school, and you just have mm -hmm. this. These, this group of, of actors and actresses and techies that just want to create stuff, which I, I love that environment when we're all, yeah. let's, let's do something. Yeah. And so high school was the, the perfect time because one, we all didn't have jobs and we just, we just went to school. Oh, <laughs> and the we good old days. Getting, uh, right, right, exactly. Yeah. And just people willing, willing to show up and work for free. I mean, of course it was like a rinky dink thing in my garage and we'd set up, you know, butcher paper to make a cave, but we were all, mm -hmm. Hey, let's do this. Let's, let's. Yeah. And I just started, you know, pumping them out and with, with no uh, inclination that they'd be, be seen or, you know, embraced by the public. I was just making them to show at parties and, you know, at my birthday have a big premiere. And finally it was over time, the idea came up it's like maybe maybe this should go public and amazingly i sent one off attack the octopus people was when i was 15 mm -hmm. and i sent it off to alpha video and they loved it they knew exactly what i was going for they knew all, all the movies i was referencing the the they got that it was a kid making a film and they they completely embraced it and, and released it and it's become their most their best selling independent film that they've released amazing from, yeah and it's just this this little thing that i shot on this this 
little target camera. I remember. And yeah, yeah. I remember it's, that. Yeah. It's how old were you when you made that movie? I was 15, 14, going to 15. Yeah. See kids, and, don't let yeah. anything stop you. And I mean, the, and the, the kids that, that, that the students that I talk to now in high school and they, they, that they're having troubles, like, how do I do this? It's like, you don't realize the technology that we have right now. Oh man. You can shoot yeah. a whole thing on, on your phone. You can edit something on your phone. They have iMovie on your phone. It's like, just, just, yeah. you know, it's crazy. Yeah. And even yeah. then you can get like LumaFusion if you want to get really technical. Yeah, and you yeah. Can download, you can buy it for like 30 bucks or something like that. And then it's like even, even more in depth. Like I've done a lot of editing just on the phone and kids just yeah. do not realize that. I think it takes a certain kind of drive. And I think that's what you have. Yes. yes. I think yeah. I know it's what you have. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have made all these. It's 10 years of, and how did you get gooey films? I, that's a, one thing. Cause I remember so, we were trying to write, okay, go, 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 go. I'll, I'll remember what I'm going to tell you, but just go with gooey first. Gooey, gooey. So it's yeah. just uh, back when I was, Again, five years, around the time of it came from the bathroom, I had the silly putty that I tried to animate and it was going to crawl over the, the desk and attack the camera. And me, just in my crazy insanity, was just like, this is a gooey film production. And I zoomed into the, the, the silly putty. So that yeah. stuck. That's, that's why everyone's like, why is it gooey? Why is it? I was like, because that was me at age five coming up with that. That's amazing. Remember, we started writing shorts and uh, we had like this round robin sort of thing. And I've kind of explained that like it turned into like this short story collection that I started writing called the Kings and Chronicles. Remember? And yes. oh, yes. it's been like a really long birth and like it, it, it's kind of like has been halted and then started over again. But it, the amalgamation, like when it first started was you, me and Rosa, and uh, yeah. we were writing in round robin and there were like these fun, like kind of like shorts that we just one person would well, write. I think I I think you should describe what, what the, the round robin is. I, it's, yeah. I think that's fascinating. So the round robin writing is like each person, like say there's, it was us three in the group mm -hmm. and each of us had a notepad. I still have the notepads too. I have really? one or two. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, we'll set a timer for like two minutes, maybe two or three minutes. Right. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, we start writing nonstop, whatever just comes to your mind. Each person writes whatever's coming to their mind on their own notepad. Once that time yeah. is done, then you pass it to the right, that notepad. And the person doesn't really write, they just read maybe the first two sentences above with their writing. And then the timer starts again and they just continue. And then you do that for a few rounds until you like have a few pages and then you have like a script. And it's just like amazing what pops out of that. And we, we came up with some really cool stuff. Uh, the name though, one of the name ideas was like gooey shorts and i don't oh think yeah that, yeah I, I didn't think that that was gonna fly well um it i sounds wonder more, why it sounds more like a porn hub category yeah, yeah actual like um you know little <laughs> tales of terror uh <laughs> but uh you know that it is what it is and do you remember that one time we were doing like some writing at that diner and there was a fist fight that broke out between like oh i always waiter? think i think of that all the time that was amazing. where it was that was one of my that's one of my favorite memories of us you know those and guys still work there do they really? they did yeah before i left i went there and that waiter the one that was going by like yelling pendejo, pendejo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes well and we were riding weren't we? we were doing that we were going back and forth and we just looked up and they were just it's like going at it by the coffee pot the coffee pot was yeah. going over there's gonna be people burn and it was like the delivery guy and a waiter fighting in this little like little yeah. alleyway galley just, i think we just looked up and then we looked at each other and then we went back to, to ride it was just yeah new york new exactly yeah new york at its finest oh i love oh, that that was funny that was yeah funny. so i i tried like i asked you i was like you know what can i can i uh continue with this you're like you know what i've got a million other things to do so yeah, i try yeah. to um rewrite them um just like punch them up a little bit more and i tried to well you filmed some of them didn't you i lost all that footage yeah yeah but uh, they're turning uh, into uh, some really cool short stories which cool. i can then turn back adapt them in because i think through writing um just because like in those little shorts when I was filming them, I started realizing there's a lot of things that I'm leaving out. And How so? in terms like writing of detail, wise? writing wise, story wise, I think they were happening too fast. I think I could have added a little bit more detail and that could have, even if I 
would have kept it at around six, 10 minute shorts, I could have added more detail to them. I just, they weren't finished for me. You know what I mean? Like you, and, you thought you started that during, while you were filming? Yeah. I started realizing that. Yeah. I, I started thinking about that. And I think also I should have, instead of shooting all five, shooting focusing on one one at a time yeah. one at a time and i think that was a big problem because at the time we had raised like like six thousand dollars and mm. i split it with my partner my producing partner because he wrote a, a web series that actually yes. finished shooting and we yes, each got yes. like like 2500 because there was some other stuff that we needed to do like mm. for i think permits uh, for some spots, we got a jail for the uh, the other. I, yes, permits. I remember that. Uh, we also got like um, you know food and just transportation, mm-hmm. and then we had to pay camera people and sound people. And if I would have just like gone back, it was my first thing I directed. I would have just um, shot one, put the budget yes. on that, focused on someone that knew how to do good practical effects makeup. It wasn't like I was doing something crazy where i needed like yeah, yeah. tons of blood spl- splattering but it would have been cool to have just a little bit more yes. practical effects some time uh and not be rushed because yes we only had a couple of days to shoot five five yeah yeah but and the thing sucked. i love about that i mean as as much as it's terrible that that oh i hate when the, when the hard drive failed that, that i remember you telling me that Gee, I, i'm cursed i'm cursed with hard drives uh, don't say that don't say that <laughs> i am but, that's why uh, I have like the three thing, of them. It's, you need more, man. <laughs> Fifteen. Yes, dude. Um, no, what I what I love about that because that that goes into what I preach all the time for people is like, how do I, what what do I need to do to get started? I was like, just start. Film it doesn't matter if it's the crappiest thing you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Film something, and you will learn so much just by going out and doing it. And just yes. you just diving in into the deep end. Let's shoot five. Let's, let's bring in the, the script that I have. I don't even know if it's work. And the amount of stuff that you've learned from that, just, just listening to you right now, oh, that was man. a learning experience. And now you can shoot the next one. And that's why yeah. I tell people, it's like, just no matter how crappy it is, shoot something, edit it. No one has to see it. Even if it sucks, you'll learn so much. And then you can improve. Now, it's, hey, maybe I should get effects people. Maybe I should, you know, get a tripod. Maybe I should get a new microphone. And then you just keep refining and refining. I love, I love, love that. that Yeah. It it was amazing. I really did learn a ton from that because I had never directed. It was really Mm -hmm. only the first time I've ever written. I'm an actor primarily. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a model slash actor in that order. Yes. Underwear underwear plus size. So, (laughs) you know, Uh, but like, Fruit of the, you know, I, I'm, I've, I've graduated to jockey. Oh, oh, so excuse me. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I learned a lot and I learned like, you know, this is hard, but it's fun. Yeah. And the yes. challenge is learning. And, and as I, I learn and, I, and like I've started writing, I realized one of the things is that you have to be pretty passionate about the story that you're going to tell to shoot yes. it or don't waste your time doing that. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people at some point, like as being unemployed actors or whatever, it's like, Hey, jump in. Hey, can you, you want to shoot something? Let's just get together and shoot something. And I'm like, man, in New York city, getting from point A to point B is a journey. So that's yes. about two hours in and of itself going one way. Coming back is another two hours, depending on the time you're done. If it's late mm-hmm. at night, you're going to take maybe three hours. Uh, then you're going to have to deal with, are they, prepared is the story even good that you're doing you know do you like the actors that you're going to be working with or the director or do they know do they have a vision um so it's always been really really hard and whenever you would ask me to do something like hey you want to help me i would always be without a question saying yes because Uh i know your passion and i know your preparation and even if you aren't like you're not prepared like in the studio sense where you have a call sheet drawn out. You don't have like a million, you don't have like a shot list that's like calculated out and (laughs) and then an Excel sheet and all this other stuff. You know what you're going to do. You have it written down. You have the vision for it. You're writing it. You're directing it. You're producing it. You know what you're doing. And I never have wasted time. You know, it's always been fun. And that's one of the things that a lot of people don't understand. And I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves. I think you've made how many movies now? 19, 19, 20, and a lot of features. Some are shorts and all all of them are fun. 
you can see that like everybody jumped in there because they know what they were going to get in into. And, um, that's one of the, the best things I, that anyone could take away is like, love what you're doing. And that's what you do, man. That's oh, really what, what it is. And I think also it's very important to understand like what genre would you classify your movies in? Because that's one of the things that a lot of people, like we're talking to you, you're how old now? 26? 26. 26, yep, 26 now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we're talking, we haven't even mentioned just aside from the titles, what kinds of movies you're making? You've made Decius and the Minotaur, which is a stop motion claymation a la Harryhausen. Yes. You know, yes. didn't you do the pterodactyls, the cowgirls versus That's pterodactyls? Still working on that. That's it's paused right now because of COVID, but yeah. Which yes. is also like a Harryhausen film. Yes, um, yes. There's a lot of homage to uh, um, the Hammer films, you know, yes. the Night of the oh, Gorgon. Yes. Was it the mm -hmm. Night of the Gorgon? House of the Gorgon. Night, Night of Medusa. Night of Medusa. House of the Gorgon. House of the Gorgon. So yeah. you, you, you have a very interesting taste. And that's one of the, the things that I think a lot of people would love to hear about is your taste of film. Like you are a Hammer film buff. And yes. for those that don't know what Hammer films are, let's just dig yourself out from under the rock and Josh will explain <laughs> to you what Hammer films are and how you got into Hammer films and all these older movies. Which, yeah, I mean... I you're like an encyclopedia when it comes to these films. Okay. Well, th thank you. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, my films, I'd say, are, are tributes to, to the films of, of yesteryear. Like you said, the Hammer mm. films, the Harryhausen films, and people call them, which I don't agree with, have called them parodies. I don't think they're parodies per se. I think a parody makes fun of it. And I think yeah, like I'm- Yeah, scary movie, haunted house. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Movie, yeah. Like, Ooh, yeah, and yeah. I, I think it's more, honoring them it's a yeah. weird uh thing it's an, an honor a tribute to to the films that came before and and yeah. throwing in little easter eggs for the people who i mean the the the, the 39 Harrison steps I, is always in there yes yeah <laughs> yeah 39 um uh kind of like how, how marvel you you watch um i'm not a marvel fan per, per se but but the, the the last one the whichever one where everyone came back and yeah, Endgame, and the amount of little Easter eggs that they came in, and they were Marvel fans were like, "Dude, this was such a, a nice relief for us who yeah. watched it since yeah. the beginning." And that's kind of what what how I imagine my films are. It's like little names and references to movies that an older generation or fans of the older movies will, will get. Um, Absolutely. And so the yeah the, the the Hammer films, they they were a production company in England in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and mm -hmm. they uh, made all the classics, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy. The uh, Chris Lee. Yeah, Christopher Lee, Lee and Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Um, yeah. Those uh, guys, they, 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 they were crushing it. I was watching with yeah. The House That Drip Blood. Yes, well, that's Amicus, Amicus, but it's the same, yeah, the same. Uh, same crew? Yeah, it's, Wasn't it's there, the same, basically, yeah. The same, because Cushing was in that. Cushing and Lee, yeah, yes. Yeah, Cushing and Lee. Did, did Hammer do the Tales from the Crypt movie? No, that's also the original. Amicus. Um, Amicus, okay. I know yeah. that Hammer came back with new new movies, um, like yeah, the, the, yes. the Lady in Black or The Woman in Black. Yes. The Lodge was an interesting one, which was a- Yes, I haven't seen it. it, um, it it's a really, um, I liked the A lot of people didn't like it. I liked it. It was, yeah. had a really fascinating take on a, uh, like a trope that was kind of played out. Really? Yeah. Mm. yeah, it has a really good. Well, it's it's on my list. I'm waiting for it to you know come down because it, of course it never came down here to to see. At least I didn't see it here. No, it's on Hulu, I think. Oh, is it really? Okay, yeah, sweet. Dude. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, it's good. It, it, Elvis's granddaughter's in it, so that's good. Well, let's stop the pod. I'm gonna go watch it right now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so like you, you, you're into those movies and like I do have to agree with you with uh, the, the types of movies that you do make, they are homages. They're not like a parody. I don't know why people would even say parody or w I think another term that they, they throw around is like B-horror. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, maybe if mm -hmm. like- w Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's you got to think of the yeah. average Marvel audience. It's like horror. They, what's, you think of horror, you think- yeah. Exorcist, you think the paranormal activity, what the the Annabelle stuff? So yeah. it's like jump scares, films, yeah, yeah, jump scares my and blue tears. Remember we talked about that. <laughs> and passcode to to heaven, barcode yes, to heaven. Yes, remember exactly. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, 
It's a li- little in joke. For Inside joke. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, I, the B horror doesn't doesn't bother me because it's kind. Of, it does fit into that. It's not the 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 found footage type stuff. This is a different uh, genre. All, it's like like drive-in yeah. movies. Yes. Yeah. Of, of like the 50s the 60s mm-hmm. you know the, the menace with five arms is exactly yes. like those films it's like um what's that uh was it ants the them them them, them um, yeah that yeah. movie it reminds me of something like that yes and yes the, the attack of the octopus people mm-hmm. um those are those kinds of movies and those are wonderful movies and the fact that you did all those practical effects yourself is brilliant yes, yes. because when, when we were shooting that and you didn't have no fancy like like you said camera you didn't oh, have yeah. no red camera. You didn't have any. You had that little camcorder. And I was mm-hmm. always wondering how you were going to like edit this in that giant starfish and yes. all that stuff. And you did it. You managed to do it. And um, I actually found my DVD copy uh, oh, really? this weekend. Yeah. We I haven't watched it in a long time. Yeah. I need uh, to check it out <laughs> again. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. yeah. So then. Now that you've been in the Valley, okay, one of the, the, the coolest things that uh, you've always said, and I always admired this, was that it doesn't matter what job you would have as long as you were making movies. You could be flipping burgers at McDonald's as long as you were able to make the movies that you wanted to make. And I think that's a great, great attitude to have. Um, what, why is that? What, what is it about movies that drives you? It's just, it's, 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 uh, it's- just what what I have to do it's just I've made peace with like that's that's my calling that's, that's I have such joy in you know filming some, writing something filming it and then editing it together and seeing it come to life it's almost like Dr. Frankenstein seeing you know it's, it's stitching all these pieces together it's like oh it's living it's alive and getting getting to see making people audiences laugh or, or I mean you get this as an actor a stage actor yeah. it's like just getting you know the feedback and, and affecting an audience with, with whether it's a you know Hamlet soliloquy or it's a giant starfish coming out and just yeah. it seems entertaining, entertaining. That that's just that's just in in my blood. It's one of those things where like you want them to them as in the audience to escape for those yes. few minutes, for that hour, yes. for that hour and a half, mm-hmm. to forget about their worries um, in in the world. I, I think that the type of movies you make aren't really like socially conscious but as you know more as entertainment to just make you forget about yes the craziness in the world mm-hmm. and that's one, one what of the I love about it one of the the coolest coolest i mean I, there's been great uh reviews or i've talked to people afterwards but it was at the premiere of house of the gorgon last year last january in in london and we had this big premiere in in london and um this old older woman came up to me. I mean, she was like a little grandma with a cane and everything. And she goes, I just want to thank you because watching this film, I felt like I was 14 watching the Hammer films again. And I was like, oh my God, uh, this is, is exa- your job. That's is what done. it's all about. You yeah, did it. yeah, exactly. And, and the thing also with your films too, that I really love and the people like, uh, you have to go to his YouTube channel, Joshua Kennedy. And then on Facebook, it's Joshua Kennedy, Man of the Arts. Uh, yes. It, it's also the 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 ambiance, the the kind of spectacle that you bring to the film, <laughs> the trailers, the actual interviews, the the you rent out Cine El Rey for your for your premieres. Oh yeah, yeah. You they, your they, top they hat. To you go to yeah. your conventions with your top hat. You have your suit. You have the ruffles when you're Neville, and um, <laughs> you know, like you 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 have this persona. You're like uh, not Ed Wood, but. Uh, I don't know. You're like the greatest showman when it comes to I'll, like, Oh, film. Like, thank you. I'll take Ed Wood. Ed Wood's cool. Ed Wood, the, the, uh, the greatest showman, Ed Wood of uh, indie film. <laughs> Cause you're always nominated for a Rondo. Water. Yeah. Oh, I won the Rondo for, for house of the Gorgon. This Amazing. past year. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. And Rondo thank is you. a huge thing. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 a, it's the, the, the Oscar for, classic horror i'd say is and horror regular horror independent horror regular horror. yes yeah that's it's, true. It, a lot, yeah the rondos have a lot of uh, uh horror categories i think that they have like literary they also have film, they do books magazines everything yeah, music it's a huge yeah. huge uh, honor to win that so congratulations to that thank that's you. amazing i always check and i always vote for you Oh, thank you. Um, you're always up against some big people too. So that's yeah. always really cool to see. Like we you're up against, against like Blumhouse movies and stuff like yes. that. Yes. It was, it was, it was, uh, what was it? The, the La Llorona we were up against. Was like, oh, oh, well that's no contest. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I meant production quality. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is a big. There's you know, a lot of after. production. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, Yoronas after that uh, when they had to pay for that ticket to watch that movie. <laughs> did, did you? Uh, did you? Did, were you one of them? No, <laughs> no, man. The moment that they had the trailer for that and yeah. uh, they're they're playing it, and I love Linda Carlini. Like I love her. Like Dead to Me uh -huh. is it's just an amazing show. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh -huh. And I I think this was like her comeback. You know, she had been mm -hmm. kind of like on the just plateauing for a bit and happens to every actor and this was her, mm -hmm. her kind of like step up movie and uh they're playing the trailer and it's about la llorona and she's like what's la llorona oh, and i'm like oh uh, man it's just, you know it's i was really excited when they first announced it i thought that was such a cool opportunity to delve into the history to the culture to the the, and the, it's, that's, it's also that's, that's, James Wan produced it. So you got the yeah, guy from I The know. Conjuring, you got the Insidious, like, saw, like, you know, there's going to be some storyline to it. There's going to be some yeah. like, kind of, like, not just jump scares, but, um, you know, it's just... Uh, but I, 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 <laughs> Sometimes I, you got to take a, a, a ball to the back, you know? Yeah, but it's a, that's such a great opportunity to introduce that to people who don't, People in New York who've never heard of it. I mean, us, we grew up with it here in the, in the Valley, you know. Um, and that's the thing, too. Like, when you when you go online, or because I follow a lot of horror people online, because, you know, uh -huh. horror is, is, is my jam. And yeah. I, I follow a lot of people, and they're talking about La La Rona. And I was like, oh, my gosh. They're already, like, dropping the ball explaining oh, yeah. what this movie yeah. is. And then, like, there's other, like, people from, like, Minnesota explaining what La La Rona is. And it's like, uh, it's not La La Rona. It's yeah, La Llorona. Yeah. And Ugh. it's not what you're saying. Like, it's, mm -hmm, this movie mm -hmm. is whack. And so <laughs> I was just like, I'm really upset about the movie. I, I felt like it was a failed opportunity for something that could have been really cool. So uh, cool. It could have been really cool. And it could have led yeah. and, and spawned off into other things, which is also a part of the reason why I've been writing my, my, my own stories. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that uh, kind of has bled off of you and onto me was, you know, what you just said, you know, uh, if you had the idea, just go and do it because someone else is going to do it. Someone yeah, else yeah. is really going to do it. And then they might do it really, really bad. Like really bad, <laughs> uh, for example, La Llorona. Yeah. And, and that was one of the most whack ass films of the decade. <laughs> and you know what? I, I, I'm not going to hate because I've been in some whack ass films, but uh, nothing that's, wrong with whack ass films. But it's this just is, knowing the culture and knowing the background of where this could have gone. They could have gone, you know, back in the day, they could have made this a period film. And just, exactly. I mean, there's so much possibilities. Yeah, and there's so many different different versions of the legend where where she drowned the kids or, or yeah, it, oh, it could have been so good, it could have been so much more. But that's why yeah. um, my top secret project is uh, being written right now, and it will be much better than that stupid. Oh, movie. good, I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> nothing but edge. I'm an edge lord. <laughs> it's just gonna be nothing but like still shots of like grass blowing in the wind. <laughs> And you can just hear Blue the tier. water. Yeah. And, and like, like, like the woman's going to be walking with her kids, but you're just going to see her like smiling as the wind's hitting her for like five minutes. And then yeah, a bird yeah. is going to swoop down into the water and it's going to be symbolic of like life leaving. <laughs> and then the kids are just going to be like playing with like little toys and then they drop it. We just focus on the toy that drops. The toy. Like, and yeah. and just, you just hear the water. In the, in the back as it yeah. zooms in onto the toy. Yeah, yeah. and then some like and, really epic like violin music is gonna play. Or I should just do like techno, like on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is that like that uh, that just, Adam Sandler movie that uh, that uh, hidden gem? Was it hidden? Not oh, hidden, uh, oh, hidden um, gems. Is it hidden gems? It's hidden gems. I think. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. Rare. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's a really good it's movie. It's hidden gems. I think it's hidden gems. Is it uncut gems? Uncut gems. There we uncut go. Uncut gems. I knew yeah. I was gonna get a whole bunch of DMs from people. <laughs> it's like you know what? On top of Matt LeBlanc being super funny, you don't even know the name of Adam Sandler movies. You a know, new movie. The Softy Brothers worked really, really hard and deserved all the awards, and they got ripped off this year. And I was like, <laughs> okay, it's a good movie. All I wanted to say was like they had a good soundtrack, and I was gonna include that in my well, film. In, yeah, in the La Llorona film. Yeah. Like on a redux <laughs> redux 
<laughs> have you have you been watching anything during this quarantine? I mean, you're always watching something, but is there anything like you've been hooked on? Like I remember what two years ago, three years ago, you were into the air, air airline movies. Oh yes. Oh well, I mean, seventies disaster. That's mm, mm. it's funny. I just watched uh, today uh, Black Sunday. It's mm. a se- 70s disaster film. I mean, there's a Black Sunday, which is the Mario Bava, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. vampire film. But this okay. one was uh, Robert Shaw and Bruce Dern. And mm. uh, it was, they're going to, the big Goodyear blimp that flies over the, the Super Bowl, there was going to yeah. be a bomb on it. And, oh, it was, it was just that, that 70s deliciousness. It was a little, little yeah. too brutal for my yeah. personal taste, but it was still, still I mean, Robert mm. Shaw and Bruce Dern. Yeah, um, yeah, it was it was solid. But um, I started watching, uh, and you were the one who recommended it. The the Skinwalker Ranch. The oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. was crazy. That yeah, was, like, I, I watched. I'm surprised I watched you don't know one. about these things. And the yeah, Bob Lazar documentary. I watched that one. That was the other one I watched. And yes. and uh, I want like over the, this past week because we had the hurricane too. Yeah. So. Um, um, the, have anything the best times to watch those in particular because of the content. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they had like, um, what's his name that, uh, uh, what is his name that directed that movie? Was it uh, Jeremy Corbyn or George? Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy, Jeremy, yes, yeah. Jeremy Corbyn. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast. And, um, you know, I had. I think you about, sent it to me. You sent that to me, and then that's yeah. what started this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, and like I have known about Skinwalker Ranch because I'm very, very into these cryptids, and I'd never heard of it before. That's um, crazy. The thing about Skinwalker Ranch that's really fascinating is it isn't like one particular thing. It's not just UFOs. Yes. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the Bridgewater Triangle in, in Massachusetts where you know they've had um Everything. UFOs, they have had like Bigfoot sightings, they've had like um skinwalkers. That's why it's called Skinwalker yes. Ranch. Um if you listen to that podcast with uh what's his name? I think George Knapp and, and Jeremy Corbell um on Joe Rogan, they're talking about the interviews that they were doing. Like yes. Knapp was an, a, is a legit journalists like he he's not like a a, a crypto zoologist yeah he's not like a nutty buddy he he really is an investigative journalist like he was doing like crime reports for the the newspaper and stuff yeah like that. yeah and he got into the uh, bob lazar stuff just because it was just i guess it fell into his lap and he thought it was kind of full of shit at the beginning and then Mm -hmm. he kind of just started like realizing this guy maybe is on to something and for 30 years yes they discredited bob lazar he talked about this compound um i can't remember the name of the compound but it's an element that you can't find anywhere and they're 115 115 compound 115 and or element 115 and like you can't find it anywhere and it people were discrediting him they said he didn't have all these credentials these doctors they said mm-hmm. he didn't even work at certain places and he's saying like uh was it nap was saying and even jeremy corbo was saying when they were doing the research in this into bob lazar like they were like call his employers one day and they say oh yeah he worked here they would follow up because they never got back to him weeks later and they're like oh he's never worked here we never heard of him yes yes you know what i mean they yeah, discredited yeah. him and guess what happens throughout this whole covid thing is they announced that they actually had contacts with UFOs. They released the mm-hmm. video. The Pentagon has released the video. And yeah. it's just nuts to even think that, okay. I know. 2020 couldn't get any weirder. <laughs> there, there, was a, there was a meme that said, you know, 2020 is bad when the government says, you know, re- reveals the UFO things and you oh, hardly even man. react. It's like, uh, we knew it. Yeah. <laughs> What's oh, well, duh. What else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the thing about, uh, real quick, it's, it's some of the bobbles are for people who don't know. Uh, it's a documentary on Hulu, on Netflix. Uh... I think the Bob Lazar is on Hulu and the Skinwalker Ranch is on, on uh, Hulu. So, wait, wait. wait. I, Bob Lazar is on Netflix and then Skinwalker okay, yes. is on Hulu. Yeah. And it was Bob Lazar, he's, just, he's a scientist who says that he worked at Area 51 and he was working on a giant flying saucer for the government, trying to figure yeah. out what powers it. And the, the thing that, that was just so unsettling about that was how calm he was. He's just an ordinary guy. Who, who, yeah. I was thinking they would show him and he'd be like, you know, twitching and like, yeah, you know, the, the government, the, the, he's just a normal guy. He's like, I, 
I work there and you yeah. can believe me or not, but he's just so normal. That was very unsettling. Yeah. I mean, and and what's what's fascinating is that he was talking about the different spacecraft that he was running into yes. that he witnessed and on the opposite spectrum, there's a, a, another journalist who's written several books. Her name is Abby Jacobson. She wrote the book about Operation Paperclip and then Area 51 uh, as well. And mm. she's got some stuff that kind of confirms what Lazar was saying, but then yeah, also yeah. kinds of justifies, like, maybe there is some kind of kind of craft that the U.S. is working with that they don't want the public to know about. I mean, it's always a wartime situation where they're trying to yes, get yes. the leg up. And I think one of the things that they talked about was like they might have never have released the alien or UFO footage, not to to create hysteria, but because they didn't want other people to know that they had it. They other had countries, it. they didn't want yeah. Russia to know, they didn't want China to know, they don't want other superpowers to know that they had this, yeah. and that maybe that they're using this for their own technology. Because what if they find it, or what if they start searching for it, and there's espionage, and then there's just they turn into it's a national a security. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just so crazy that. It's the fact that like space and like aliens and like UFOs is in the realm of like real reality now. I know it's it's like almost it's we're almost there. It's almost. It's, I mean, I automatic. I just think again the B movies, you know, Data yes. still or War of the Worlds is ooh. It's like now it's hey, the government just said we there's and no one bats an eye like you said. I know no saying, one bats an eye. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's with, within the realm of. I always think back to Jules Verne and H.G. Wells when they were yeah. predicting submarines and, and oh, you know, yeah. all this technology. And now it's like, hey, we, that's, that's part of everyday life, man. But when it came out, it was such a, such a, a shock. Now it's, hey. it's like, oh, underwater boats. That would never happen. Not yeah, in a yeah. million years. <laughs> yeah. Not in a million years. No, never. Never, happen. never. Never. Then, we, you know, the, we're fine with our steam engines running <laughs> above ground steam, where God yeah. wants it. Electricity? God, Nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, what a is horse drawn carriage? Yeah, or uh, Ben what is Franklin, it? that quack flying kites in the storm and the horseless carriage. My god, what a what do they think of next? What is this witchcraft? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, now we've got spacecraft. <laughs> but going back to Jules Verne, though, that's another thing that people don't know about you is aside from filmmaking. You have made some grand spectacles on stage. Oh, yes. You yes. did 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> under the sea, yeah, on, on stage. stage. Yes, yeah. Um, we did, we did 20,000 leagues. We did the Ten Commandments. Yeah. We did King Kong. Um, we did King Kong uh, before it was like the big Broadway thing. I know, I know. I, I remember when they first announced that, that they were going to do it on Broadway, all of my actors from the King Kong stage production mm -hmm. were sending me emails. just like, look, yeah. we did it first. We did it first. You should of sue course. them. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I, I love, I mean, you, you love film and stage. I, I just, and, and oh, yeah. that, that, that entertaining, entertaining people. And, 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 like I said, you're the greatest showman. Like you have the spectacle <laughs> and, and even uh, you, uh, seriously, if, if once this is done, go to Joshua Kennedy's YouTube channel, check out the gooey 10 year promo, but also just check out the trailers for his films. It's just like the shocker. You remember? It was like, oh, the tingler. Oh, you better yeah, watch yeah, out. Yeah. Don't go to bed alone. You don't want to yeah, go yeah, to yeah. this picture alone. You got to hug someone tight because we yes. have the menace that, that, with that, five arms. That's such a lost art. Well, one, posters in, in particular. I mean, yeah. you look at the posters of back in the day. And they're huge and, you know, big spectacles and the greatest scene you will ever see in your life. I love yeah. that, that. That that's such a lost art now. Never um, before has there been quite yeah. a piece like this. Yes. And it's a movie and about me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, wearing Dwayne, I'm wearing the Dwayne the Rock Johnson shirt. Uh yeah. Did you see I just saw an article that he was considered for Willy Wonka before Johnny Depp for the Tim Burton one. That would have just, been I, amazing. Wouldn't that have been just so strange? It would have been amazing. Just, I, it would have been a completely different movie, but I yeah. would have I mean, I'm not against until I see it, I'm not against you. You know. can't be against it. Like, how would yeah. that have been? Like, it's like, where are the Oompa Loompas? Get yeah, your with his NDS is out of here. Charlie. Uh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, Augustus Gloop, <laughs> get out of my chocolate river. Who do, who if knows? you smell what Wonka's cooking. <laughs> Imagine that. 
If Dwayne The Rock Johnson I, was, was Willy Wonka. Yeah, amazing. think about that. Yeah. The guy is the, the, the highest paid actor right now, action star. Uh, he is planning on revamping the Jungle Cruise. I saw that. I saw the trailer for that. I, I went to Disney. Rosa and I went to Disney in uh, 2017, uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. Man, no, I'm going to say 2018. I, I don't know my dates, but we it's went for our sorry. anniversary and um, uh-huh. we went on that Jungle Cruise ride and we're like, whoa, like when we were on that, I was like, this is fun, but it's so dated. They need to revamp yes. it with something. And lo and behold, I called it. I think someone heard me talking. Like when yeah. I was on that, I was like, you know, who would have been perfect for this? Like if we could get like something with like, I don't know, maybe like a Mary Poppins type Mm-hmm. female actress and boom emily blunt's cast and i was like and then like opposite her you get someone kind of bulky but kind of suave yes but, you know like kind of like you know he's kind of like chiseled oh like a rock the rock the and i was rock. like that and then boom and i think some boom. disney exec was like oh, oh sir I, 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 I've, I've got an idea i got the greatest idea what is it wow. smithers oh uh, what if we revamp the jungle cruise with emily blunt and, and Dwayne the Rock Johnson is like, huh? That's a brilliant idea. Get Glad that I man a that. cupie doll. <laughs> yeah, and all I got was a respiratory infection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Disney. But that was supposed to come out th- this summer, or was it? Uh, I saw the previews yeah. for it, and of yeah. course, I, everything's everything's just just everything. Right now. Man, I, I was I'm looking forward to Candyman, but I don't even think I'm gonna get to see Candyman. In even the theaters. the the. Inception, it wasn't yeah, Inception. Yeah, Tenet. It was like, Tenet. Tenet, there you go. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. They kept fighting for it to come out in theater, like insisting, no, it's going to come out this summer mm-hmm. in theater. Nope. No, no. Nope, nothing, man. It's been so crazy. Like, it's been one of the weirdest, weirdest years ever. Like, it, like I mean, what else compares? What like else compares? Said, in December or November of last year, 2019, yeah. if you would have said that all of this would have happened, you know, yeah, with the list, list the list, of everything that's Dude, going especially on. where we live right now. Like you and I both lived in New York City. I think you were there mm-hmm. when that guy blew himself up on the, the, the subway tunnel in the subway tunnel or when there was that was bomb that, that went off. That was yes, yes, you're ago. right. Yes. There was a yes. bomb that went off on like 23rd Street. Yes. You know, there was the uh, there's always protests going on. There was mm-hmm, always mm-hmm. something going on. Blizzards, you name it. Who yeah. would have thought that, that craziness would have followed us down? You, you, were, you were born and raised here. I was born and raised here. We lived in New mm-hmm. York for several years. Craziness was there, but that's expected. But not like this, yeah. dude. We're getting here. pummeled by COVID. We're getting pummeled by a hurricane. A Category 1 hurricane. I know. Can you believe yeah. that? Like, w- w- Didn't you move up to New York during Sandy as well? No. Oh, I, did you go I the year after? Right after. Right after. Completely dodged that. But um, – so, I have to say that hurricanes, as bad as they have been, have kind of been a form of good luck for Rosa and I. Really? Yes. Yes. How so? And, and How it's so? always been at the beginning of a new venture or adventure or journey for us. In our relationship, when we first started dating, there was like a, a hurricane and like her mom was by herself and this house in Donna and a, a hurricane. We were like a month or two into dating. And we made it. I had to stay with them. Like, I stayed in the other room. It was, like, really romantic. It was, like, Knights and Rodanthe, but with my future <laughs> mother-in-law in the other room with my future yeah. wife. Um, so it wasn't that romantic, per se. But, you but know, I, it was, I, like, a storm. I know what you mean. I know what Roof you mean. was leaking. Glasses, you know, windows were breaking. I was there without my shirt with my muscles, you know, glistening out there with a hammer and a bandana. I was saving the day. And, yeah. you know, that sparked the relationship, like, thing. Like, you know, after that storm, we weathered that. 10 years later, we're still here together. We've been married eight. We got married in 2012, moved up to New York. Mm-hmm. And Sandy hits like right yes, before Halloween. Yes. And that kind of kicked off a beautiful journey for us in, in New York City, where I was fortunate enough to work in a lot of the gigs that I worked at. Rosa excelled and, and continues to excel in her job. You know, that sets off another storm. And uh, it's a big hurricane. And actually, before then, I moved up to New York by myself. Yes. In 2011, the year before that, there was a mini hurricane, Irene. 
And so oh, with right. every new beginning, there has been a massive hurricane. All right. And so with this one, we moved down. We have a daughter. And, um, you know, it, it kind of is like, it, in my mind, I kind of equate that to like, if you can weather this storm, you know, together, you're going to have longevity and yes. you're going to, you know, excel in whatever you do. Just know that you stay focused through the storm. Yeah. You can I weather love that. that. Yeah. So I'm trademarking that idea. <laughs> yes. And if I see it made by anybody who's been listening, you're getting sued. <laughs> but that's literally what has happened to us. No, I and, love that because it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a new beginning. It's a new, new chapter in, in your yeah. lives. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, actually, going back to Sandy, I kind of yeah. started wanting to write this idea of like, you as one of the characters at Pace. And I was mm. in, in Jersey City where we were living. You remember the apartment where yes. we lived at? Oh, yeah. And um, one of the things is like as this storm was happening, we were trying to like get you out from – because, you know, in that area, you have to evacuate all the time. I think you told me this. Yeah. You told me this idea, yeah. And there was and like – it's almost like the mist where stuff was coming out of yes. the storm yes. and like this kind of plague or like this, these, these animals and stuff. And so it's a race against time to get you out from the city and back to safety. But then Rose is by herself, so we got to get – meet you get to her and it's like this whole thing and uh, i think i should finish that one day huh that sounds that sounds awesome it's it's almost yeah. like a mixture of the mist and and uh, the day after tomorrow oh, did you ever see that one? Oh yeah it's been raining Love for that three movie. days yeah yeah <laughs> yeah is it dennis quaid yes and the little jake gyllenhaal yeah yeah and oh. uh I mean, there's a lot of people. Who else is in that? Emmy Rossum is in it. Emmy, oh, and, wow, Emmy Rossum. Yeah, yeah, very young Emmy yeah, Rossum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Man, yeah was Brendan Gleeson in that, or am I making that up? I'm making that up, probably. I, I just want him to be in everything. Yeah, well, that's that's that's, that's a given. <laughs> He's so good. He was in uh, Mr. Mercedes. Okay, I didn't see he that. didn't even attempt. He didn't even attempt to hide his Scottish accent. <laughs> Playing a detective in the United States. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever and, works. And he was good, man. He was perfectly cast. It's just like you couldn't have hid He's your just accent. Tried. Yeah, dude. Like you're a good actor. His son is killing it, though. <laughs> is he? Yeah, dude. He was in uh, the new Star Wars movies. Well, you know. Well. You know my my thoughts on the new Star Wars. Movie. Well, I know. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Let's be controversial here. There, there are no there are no thoughts Ooh. except for Rogue One. Rogue One is mwah, a piece of beauty. Yeah. Do you like the Mandalorian? Uh, I haven't watched Mandalorian. I think you'd like it. It's fun. What, I that's what I've heard. It's very simple and and uh, low key. I, I like that it's not uh, connected to the Skywalker story. Which is what I mean. We're now we're going into a whole other thing. I thought they should have done that with the, first, the uh, force awakens like why why do we have to bring the, the skywalker i know this is controversial and you want to get all the the dms yeah, yeah of course um yeah but uh well i get controversial yeah, I, when i say i'm not a huge star wars fan and then okay. i get harassed on the street <laughs> you know People throwing stuff they're throwing tomatoes and cabbages at me mm -hmm. uh oh, during my performances wow. <laughs> so yeah no like you said that about star wars you you jerk yeah in the Trekkie. name of george lucas like i don't even like star trek either oh even worse you're oh! An animal. <laughs> die you die a slow death yeah no um i i, I like rogue one rogue one was perfect I'll i loved it i loved it mm. i loved it and to even tie it all the way back my favorite actor peter cushing from the hammer films he made his back to life with, yeah. it, with cgi i thought that was one of the coolest what things. is your if opinion not, on that i i was for it they got the permission from his estate yeah. I, I i for that okay I'll, I'll, I'll let me revise that let me revise it i was all for it for that film for that actor that but there's people talking that they're going to make new marilyn monroe movies i mean james that's dean different... yeah they're, james, they're bringing james dean i don't know how i feel about that for I, I don't get that for for the, the role of of Tarkin and Rogue One just because he originated it and that too that when they had interviews with different people and the uh, guy Henry who played him that it was it was to honor him they would yeah. they would feel terrible if they they cast someone else and I, yeah. I get that and they tried their best um with with the seat I'm sure 10 years from now 
the CGI will look terrible in, in comparison. Uh, Man, I don't CGI. know. But ha- like if you watch Lord of the Rings now, that CG still holds up. And that came out years. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm talking, I mean, again, another full circle to about the, the rock in, in The Mummy when he comes out. Oh, of that was whack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, where are we going with this? Star just, Wars Rogue One. You wrote Rogue One. Was, yeah. You didn't I'm like the, the 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 Rise of the Skywalker franchise or the that trilogy, the last three. Yeah. Uh, I agree with mm-hmm. you. I think they should have moved on from the Skywalker story. It, or if, if they, they, the thing that I've heard, and again, this just rumor, is that they didn't have an idea of where they were going. It was... So why filming, make a movie? That's, 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 that's why make a trilogy. That's, you should know where this is going. And yeah. that's... Again, this might be wrong, but this is what I heard. And it, but it made sense that they had Force Awakens was just a standalone film, and then they handed it off to the next person. It's like, do you know where these characters are going? Because apparently, no. I I didn't watch anything after seven. I was done after Force Awakens. I was like, yeah, I'm watching my. I haven't seen the, the, the following two, but apparently, the, there are questions that were posed that were never answered, and there were just characters that went places that didn't. Get, I was like, where's the yeah the overarching which in the, again go back to Marvel. They they Marvel had this perfectly. I, I don't enjoy their films, but they knew they planned it out. They knew exactly where they were going. Marvel did something that has never been done in history, and did made nineteen movies that were all pretty good. Whether you're they're a film, all, fan or not, like I'm they're not all huge, connected. Like I'm an X Men guy. I'm more of a Wolverine guy. I'm um, mm-hmm. not a huge Marvel like. The, like Avengers guy, but I sat through all of those. I even rewatched them, mm. and I'm just so fascinated by how they connected everything. Yeah, From the very first movie, you know, you have the Iron Man, you have Captain America, you have the Avengers, to you know Infinity War and Endgame, and how they just tie up. They all tied it all together, and, like, and it's just like I don't know if that will ever be done again in history. Yeah, Nineteen that- films. Was it 19 films? 19 films? Something like that, yeah. And even if the, the other films, like the little sub films um, for like the, the, the smaller characters, like the Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yes. Like they knew what they had. They kept, they kept a kind of um, aesthetic to every single one of these films. Yeah. Like Feige did a great job keeping everything in line and cohesive to mm-hmm. bring it all together and wrap it up. You know, you have Black yes. Panther, you have the Incredible Hulk. The one thing is like, they can never get the Hulk movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but aside from that, like they did so well with the Winter Soldier and Civil War. And then when they introduced Spider-Man in Civil War, the new Spider-Man. It was just, everything just, just, just it was yeah. planned out. There was a blueprint. And I, I don't know how the people with the news, the Star Wars thing, how that, why that wasn't, Disgust. It's like, where are these characters going? That's just, it's, yeah, that's. And that's three movies as opposed to 19. Yeah, I know. And they they couldn't get three. They couldn't get one, right? They they got Rogue One. They got Rogue One. I'll give you Rogue One. But think about, like, they could have used Rogue One as a catapult, but I think they're trying to make up for it with, like, The Mandalorian. I think you should give that a shot. Give it a shot. And what I love about The Mandalorian and the way someone kind of explained it to me is more like a space western. Yes, well, that's what Star Wars is. That's just, it's a space western, exactly what it is. The but saloons, the, yeah. the cantina, the hey, we got this cargo, blah blah blah. Let's, let's yeah, you got gunslingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and, what and, it is. And, and the the Mando is just like, he's he's so cool. It's very yeah. simple. They're it's, very short it's, episodes. He's Clint Eastwood. He is. He's, yeah. And and um, you you go into the uh, the Mandalorian mythos, and you get that cute little baby Yoda. <laughs> whatever it's like and, and like i didn't watch it for the longest time because of that overhyped baby yoda yeah but yeah. after watching it i'm kind of like i want to see where this goes because this mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. like the whole storyline is very interesting itself with that so well, they're, they're, they're 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 making it small and they're doing it which is what the first star wars is anyway yes small and almost low budget and it's like like almost rinky yes. dink space western yeah it's, it's yeah they're, what do you think what do you think Star Wars went wrong? Um, I I will defend the prequels. I know a lot of people. I think George Lucas wanted to to. I don't know how you agree with the, the prequels. He he wanted to make his movie. The whole thing was he wanted to make movies his way, 
And that's yeah. what he did with the prequels. He, he wrote them. Maybe he's not the best writer. Maybe he's not the best director. But he didn't want any studio interference. So he became so big, became this whole, huge media yeah. empire and made his films. And whether you hate them or love them, that's what he wanted to do. Agreed. And I just think with this, they were trying to, to my humble opinion, Force Awakens, I think they were just trying to please too many people. One, you have yeah. to... The hype, I mean, the hype was just astronomical. There's yeah. no way you, any, could anything, yes, they're, they're, I will take it back. They're, they could have hit the hype, for me at least. But um, you had to, one, please the fans of the original trilogy. Two, you needed to win in the new generation. Three, you had to appease all of the, the, the you, you want to bring in, you know, the, 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 the new, new fans and you just get, get, new fans and the old fans that's yeah. basically where i'm Absolutely. going it was just it was a mixture of too many too many i think too many cooks in the kitchen yep the prequels love them or hate them george lucas was the guy this is what i want this is what's going to happen that's it this yeah. was the big it was, it was a little bit more cohesive because he did all three didn't he yeah and you can you can watch them and they, they made their yeah. characters and in whether they're written well or that's up to, up to you but i think what would force awaken what there is just so much, it's so dense, so much. I, I also uh, felt that with Force Awakens too, they were trying to play into kind of fan fiction. You know, like, oh, we want the Luke Skywalker daughter storyline to come up. And like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like, is she his daughter? No, is she a Skywalker? We're going to have and, this. And, and it's, the thing that that's, that's of, of, again, the world we live in, some of the, the fan fiction and, and like the people that were tweeting and stuff and coming up with their own ideas, some of that was better than what ended up in the, in the thing. I remember the, yeah. the, the, the force, this was Kat and I, our huge, my sister and I were huge Star Wars fans. And when the who first works for NASA, out, who Kat works for NASA. Yeah. Crazy. She can tell us yeah. all about stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when she first went off, she was moving up to, to Houston to go work for NASA. I was like, Kat, if the moon landings were fake, you need to come back and blink. And like, you don't have to say in case she goes, Josh, I'm already Mike. They already bugged me. I, I can't talk. Anymore. Uh, she got the chip. <laughs> they chipped her. Yeah, they, they already chipped me. I can't say anything. But we were, uh, there was this whole big debacle when the force awakens, the first trailer came out or the yeah. second, the, the big trailer and Luke wasn't in it. Do you remember that? And yeah. I was like, where's Luke? Where's the, of course now we know the whole, the whole yeah. story. Yeah. Of- where he is but there was so much controversy They're like maybe luke is that guy is kylo ren maybe he went to the dark side why would he and all of the hype completely eclipsed what uh actually came out in the movie i was like oh he just was wasn't in it oh he's okay. a hermit they, yeah. they couldn't like, afford he, him what if darth vader came back and you know completely took over his son why is maybe he's working for the dark side now and there's just all these great ideas that just yes but that's the world we live in Every, everyone has their own opinion and there's no way they could have pleased everyone. yes and that's the problem with a lot of these big studio films and franchises yes. now is that we as fans are getting so spoiled and bratty about this sort of thing yes. it's not our stories to tell it's yeah. our stories to enjoy and the mm-hmm. storytellers tell the stories. And I remember when Star Wars came out, like Ryan Johnson directed the second of the, the new yes. trilogy. And I was talking about how much I loved Ryan Johnson and Knives Out. I loved yeah. that movie. It's so yeah, fun. Yeah. It's yes. one of those murder mysteries that I've been waiting years and years and years for. You know, it's got every kind of trope that I was looking for in a murder mystery. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was saying like, man, I love Ryan Johnson. And some people were saying like, Ryan Johnson sucks. You know yeah. what he did a Star Wars? I'm like, no, I really don't care because I love Knives Out. It was awesome. Knives Out was great, yeah. yeah. Knives Out was amazing. Yeah. And, and um, the, the, I watch it over and over again. I love Knives Out. Uh, but the, the, you, you tapped into something where it's just the, 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 you're either in or you're out. Brian yeah. Johnson did the terrible Star Wars movie. I will never watch anything he, he does. Yeah. Or, or you know, it's, it's that, that type of the cancel culture, which is so strange. So to go back to, to the, the new prequels, I mean, the new sequels to Star Wars. I don't care for them. I hope someone likes them. But I yeah, realize I, it's like, this, this, this is my right. story. Yeah, they're just not... Like, it's, I, I really couldn't get engaged with them like uh, I did with the others, like the beginning. And it's not fair also to say... It's also fair to say that I'm not a huge sci-fi guy. 
Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. more horror. I'm more suspense. I'm more into like a thriller. I'm like, I love me a murder mystery. I love like a gritty detective noir story. Give me, give me a Chinatown. Give me seven, you know, give me LA confidential even like, you know, give me something gritty like that. That's like what I want. True detective is my favorite series. Season one is my favorite. And then I love horror. And, um, Mm. I do have to say that um, uh, when it comes to sci-fi, I'm not the biggest or well-versed in, in it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I, I also know what I like and what I don't like. And yeah, I loved Blade Runner 2049. I did okay, not like yeah. the Star Wars movies. You know, I loved yeah, how beautiful yeah. Blade Runner was. 2049 was a lot easier to follow for me than the very first Blade Runner, which I also thought was really good. But this one, I think, may help me like Blade Runner 2049 helped me understand Blade Runner. And mm-hmm. I just saw those for the first time during the quarantine. Interesting. In my okay. life. Yeah. yeah. And it's fascinating, the storyline. Mm-hmm. And fascinating how we're headed. LA is headed to, in that direction. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> really fast. They're not far off on the timeline either. Well, you, you sent me that thing uh, a few weeks ago where it was Soylent Green is 2022. Did you send me that? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, where it's like... It's 20, the Soylent Green! It's made out of people. Uh, made out of people. <laughs> we gotta stop them! So that's a really good movie for anyone yeah. who hasn't seen it. Oh, that's such a solid, solid movie. Um, so, before we wrap up, I, uh, yeah, yeah. what, what uh, movies do you recommend uh, that you've seen during this quarantine for people, you know, the, out, out, outside of the norm? Um, because you know, you're going to get all of the normal Netflix and, and, uh, Hulu yeah, yeah. but something out of the norms. Like I remember you introduced me to used cars. Oh, used cars. You introduced Great. me to a lot of movies that I had never seen before. And I feel Look, like you have um, uh, some good, good ones. Good ideas. What, what do you recommend? Thanks. Uh, I just quarantine and I'm trying to think of something that's, that's readily available. Cause a lot of the stuff I watch, I mean, on, Blu-ray, which is becoming yeah. a lost thing. Now everything's streaming. Um, I will recommend the, the the Bob Lazar documentary on Netflix. Yeah. It's Bob Lazar and Area 51, I think. Yeah. That's what it's called. Bob Lazar and yeah. Area 51. Um, on Amazon Prime, I watched, and it was because it was, uh, I finished the Bob Lazar one, as you might also be interested in. It yeah. was the Missing 411. Mm. And it's a, it's a documentary, and you'd love this, documentary about people in the woods that go missing without a trace and and is so interesting and there's one part where they are i'm not going to give anything away they some they're all hunters and they're all experienced hunters older gentlemen women too going out to hunt and, and they back. their back is their back is turned for one second they turn back around they're just gone vanished yeah. no trace at all the dogs yeah. can't sense them and anyway there there's recordings audio recordings of these hunters in the woods and they're commute they're they're they hear these noises in the woods and it was one of the creepiest things i've ever heard because it was actual audio they and had the audio these, they have the audio and you you listen to it and it's what the heck is are they hearing oh, man, and I love that stuff it is watch it during the day if anyone yeah. you know is man it creeps me out you know john gonzalez right john and leah yes yes so John has his website, uh, True Horror Stories of Texas, and they're all is that his? Stor- yes, dude. Oh, I never it's knew It's amazing, that. man. Like if you want to kill yes. some time, go yes. on True Horror Stories of Texas, and like you're gonna yes. hear about all these kinds of like the black eyed kids, you know, ghosts oh, on yeah. Las uh, like Las Palmas, you know, or yes, yes. and, and, the, and uh, La Homa Road Chusa. ghosts. Yeah, the Chusa's yes, yeah. everywhere go some fort brownsville or something like that like it is yes oh i didn't know that was his that's so yes, funny dude it's so good like i follow i follow it all the time i see yeah that's so isn't funny. it fun do, do, wow. do, do stories like these give you ideas or yes are you more into like i know lately in the last few films you've paid homage to to movies you know gorgons mm. medusas uh the vesuvius probably like stuff like that dracula ad 2000 yeah. 20, 2015 2015 yeah. And a lot of these are, are kind of homage to, to older Hammer films. But yes. do stories like this, I think, would give you kind of ideas. Oh, Remember yes. The giant bird was kind of a... Yes, the big for- bird, yes. Um, yeah, oh, I, I love the, that Skinwalker thing just blew my mind. And I just, just the idea that, that you're in this house 
and it's not aliens it's not polter it's it's everything it's a- yeah. it is aliens it's poltergeist it's bigfoot and it's shadow people and it's just is yeah. it a doorway to a Skin different walkers. dimension yeah 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 that, it just it fires my mind i wrote some some notes down where it was just just uh-huh. scenes i was like wouldn't it be creepy if we saw someone like just a shadow person walking okay. across a window like just exactly like you have some spots in, in here in the valley where you've shot before that you could use as a skinwalker ranch oh yeah, yeah. for your own little thing so like yes. i mean once this quarantine's over i mean you don't even have to wait like for you i know you're probably shooting yeah. something at home <laughs> doing nothing yeah of course with your family yes. yeah which is amazing oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man that's so cool yeah you should yeah do like that yeah, it, well, that that documentary uh, to go back that that's another great documentary. But it was Hunt for the Skinwalker Ranch or just Hunt for I think, the Skinwalker. I think Hunt for the Skinwalker. Yeah, it's Something a it's like a little it's, it's a little dense with with the narration. I didn't care too much for the narration. Yeah, sometimes the people get a little weird too. But yeah, uh, but I mean, yeah. the, just the stories alone, even if they're made up, it's they're just fascinating stories. Like, yeah, like the stuff with the cows or the, the bulls. Yes, in the pen. Yes. Yeah, that, that's that's just what what a weird thing. Yeah, I don't man. want to give it away for for people who haven't seen it, but this, no, no, no. This, and it's it's we can relate to it down here in South Texas too. Yeah, yeah. Chupacabras and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But yes. um, you haven't heard much from them lately. <laughs> They're taking a break. Well, hurricane. Yeah. Hurricane. COVID. But wouldn't you social think that? Distance. Oh, I know that chupacabras are social distancing. Is that All what it is? Masks. Yeah, yeah they're just go. there. It's like uh <laughs> they have this little hole so they could suck blood. That's it. <laughs> they have the, the tape measure for six feet now. Nah, we can't yeah, do it. No. Cheap with cabras. <laughs> Practice safe yeah, social yeah. distancing. Oh man. We yeah. Could you, learn, the valley could learn a thing or two from those social distancing chupacabras. Exactly, dude. Them and Bigfoot, because Bigfoot's never around when you need them. Yeah. They're of social distancing. That's what they're doing. They don't want to get yeah. diseases. We all knew of that. Uh yeah. Science, man, I love it. I love it. So, uh, what what do you have in the pipeline for uh, Gooey Films? Gooey Films, we got Cowgirls versus Pterodactyls, which Amazing. is amazing. Yeah, slowly coming. It's it's coming. Um, it's funny with with COVID, I've been able to for the first time just stop and yeah. take my time, go back, look at the is this scene working? Which is rarely, I, I rarely have time or or. To, take the time to do that. It was like, yeah. does this work? What can I do to improve the scene? So yeah. it's been nice to do that. Um, so yeah, it's still, still coming along. Yeah. Little ways to go, hopefully by, by Christmas. Um, but there, there's still ways to go. Nice, nice. And, and then uh, where can we see your other stuff? Joshua Kennedy on YouTube? Yeah, just on YouTube and on Facebook. And the man of yeah, the arts. The man, Josh Kennedy, man of the arts. Yes. I love it. Brother, yeah, man, yeah. it was great chatting with you. It's been too oh, long. Oh, same here. I know. I know. We need to get you back once. I mean, everything calms down with COVID and the family and the kids. Yeah. We need to get you in, in a new movie. Oh, we'll definitely do that. Like once this COVID's done, we're going we're gonna to yes. make some magic. That's for sure. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, Josh, man. Thank you for, uh, for joining me today. I really, really appreciate that. My pleasure. Thank taking you. Taking time out of your busy schedule. I know. So much to do. So much to do. All right, everybody. Uh, Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes and Spotify and leave some decent reviews, five star preferably. And uh, just uh, write down and say how handsome I am and uh, shoot me a DM. I'm at uh, Jorge Chapa 11. That's J-O-R-G-E-C-H-A-P-A 11 on Instagram. And I don't do Facebook much anymore, so don't even bother me there. And uh, I'm Jorge Chapo on YouTube. So uh, thank you all for listening and watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.